Rees of anguish. Except for, um... When did God of War come out? God of War. Oh, that was a... <laughs> when yeah. did God of War come out? You remember I mentioned those videos that Matt did? And they were saying yeah. that um, people were saying Warrior Within was influenced by God of War, yes. which is impossible. Uh, well, this sure as hell was. Yeah, this is uh, this is the, the Chains of Olympus right this there. This is God of War right here. Uh, so you have to, this is one of those things where you have to kill enemies to get health, because your health is always going down. No, see, the one where we will know that it's God of War is if he whips it up and smacks the ground and it's a launcher. Yeah. Then we'll yeah. know. <laughs> I think that's one of the cooler bits in the most recent God of War is when you get the chains and they play spoilers. They play exactly like they did in the first four games. That's legit spoilers, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and I would hate you if I didn't know that and watch this video. To be fair, I only said that because I remember talking earlier about the bad thing happening, and you went, "Oh okay. yes." Uh, oh no, I. Oh, I'm, the bad thing. I know. I'm completely the game. You know what I'm just saying. Uh, but yeah, no, that, that that is pretty dope when you get those. And like I say, they play just like all the other games thus far. I was. Uh, it took me a while to go over to them to, to their side though, because you're so used to the axe at that mm. point, and the axe is so good. But then you, you're like, yeah, the blade's chaos though. That was kind of a launcher that Kratos has. <laughs> Does it just spot the Kratos moves now? <laughs> Possibly. In these sections. Man, if we just start indiscriminately oh, murdering passers-by, then we'll know. <laughs> Zeus! <laughs> we need Connor here. Connor would put his heart and soul into screaming Zeus. I'm sorry, I'm too tired. If we were to do a God of War LP, I'd be screaming non-stop. I... right. Legitimately, I get the feeling that Connor has just perked up wherever he is. And screams Zeus <laughs> to the heavens, like he knows. Told you, my favorite is in the Chains of Olympus, where he just yells Persephone. <laughs> it was just some, you know, she's evil, but she just looks like some woman, like just a regular. <laughs> Four syllables lady. is too long of a name to shout. That's what I'm. Yeah, that and it's a nice sounding name. <laughs> yeah. It's not got the same ring as Ares. I remember watching a show. Years and years ago when I was in college. I can't tell you the show, but I can tell you this conversation. And it's a guy planning on, like, if you would crash a wedding, how would you do it? Go on. And he says he he can't do it like this one movie where you, like, bang on the window and scream the name. Oh, like uh, The Graduate. Because... This is movie, yeah. You can't do that because this woman has a two-syllable name and the second syllable is stressed. It doesn't sound right if you shout, Elaine! It doesn't sound right. <laughs> And I don't know why that has stuck with me, because that's not even the funniest thing this show did. Oh, well, you have that moment in The there Simpsons where you smash through the uh, glass, through the window pane, and completely ruin it. I think that is the difference between parody and reference. Like, if you didn't know that was The Graduate, it would still be funny that yeah. Grandpa Simpson yeah. smashes through the window and they run off onto a bus. Yeah. Whereas a reference is just... I don't know what that's from. Is that from something? You will get nothing out. In fact, you will feel annoyed that you don't get it, and you will feel stupid and uncultured. As I am sure you have noticed. And like you don't belong. Yeah. <laughs> it's maybe a bit dramatic. This... Wait, what have I missed? Uh, the uh, difference between and... parody and reference. Okay. No, that's about yeah, it. I looked it up. And I, I think goes it across was, the room. I think it was Aristotle, not Archimedes. A bugger for the bottle, I do believe. Archimedes, there you go. <laughs> Probably yelled at him at some point. So in England, we have this show called the University Challenge. It is presented by a man called Jeremy Paxman. He is legitimate, serious political correspondent man. He's frightening. He, if you've ever seen that one British politician being interviewed, it's probably Jeremy Paxman. And interviewing him, not being interviewed. And it's probably. Him. <laughs> and I forget his uh, name, but it's the guy going, "Did you or did you not threaten to?" Did you overrule him? Yeah. Did you threaten to overrule? I did not overrule him, 
and I've spoken to the press. Did you threaten to overrule him? Oh, I remember. Who was he interviewing with that? I can't remember. Just it's I remember like some. He's, he's obscure now. I think his career was ruined. <laughs> yeah. But no, he hosts University Challenge, and one of the right. It's like there are a lot of serious business questions in University Challenge. Yeah, they're really hard. I always feel really stupid when I watch it. One of the rounds, classical philosophy. Uh-huh. Okay. According to the Monty Python song, who was a bugger for the bottle? Nice. <laughs> and then all five questions were the philosophy song by Bruce. <laughs> and Jeremy Baxman could not believe he was reading this. <laughs> Wasn't he actually there for the for the Young Ones episode where they were on University Challenge? No, Probably. that was... Or was it the, the presenter at the time? No, it was... I want to say it was Griff Reese jones Oh, no, you're right. Parodying, because yeah, right. it was Bambi. As in Bamba Gasboy. Mm. Uh, I remember on Mastermind when it was someone's specialist subject was Iron Maiden. I like taped it. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat this guy. I did not. <laughs> there was some pretty obscure stuff on. The thing that. is with Mastermind, he's like, okay, my Mastermind category would probably be like Silent Hill 2 or the Silent yeah, Hill yeah. series, right? But then the questions would be like, what brand of coffee does Yamaoka drink? I don't bloody yeah. know. Yeah. Either they can be really easy sometimes, though, then they throw in a ridiculous one. I think it's to uh, do Bruce, with how Bruce much whoever they get to do the questions knows about the subject. Oh no, uh, Bruce Bruce Dickinson was on University Challenge, that's what I'm thinking of. Ah. Oh, he did, he like killed it. He was really good. I always like seeing that kind of thing, because you expect like, oh, metalheads. No. So Not Bruce, because yeah, the, no, the man's he's... done everything. <laughs> He's, you know, he's a qualified pilot, and Historian. he's an Olympic-level fencer. Yeah, no, this, this is one of the things my dad watches. Radio presenter. Yeah. I don't know if it's Bruce Dickinson driving or being a mechanic, but it's like... He also did that show on human combustion. That that one I don't know. It was one-off. He did a show about just people, the fact that people just explode sometimes. <laughs> No, and he did it in like a really entertaining way. No, the, the one I know is my dad watches Bruce Dickinson something something cars, and it's either him showing off his car collection or being a mechanic or whatever. And it's like, eh, guy knows his stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm down with that. Yeah, he also rescued those people. Yeah, uh, flew, flew over to Iceland and successfully recovered from throat cancer. Not that that's. Uh, in the same way as more for sort of luck. Success. I'm not saying he went, he like defeated his cancer sing- with his voice or something. He sung so loud it couldn't handle it. <laughs> Successfully recovered from Ace's high. <laughs> Come on. Oh, right. So, mm. Oh, my word. Right. Right. So, Backtracking. So I've been putting, upgrades. I've been like, you know, you just t- put a CD in the car. And so I've been going through. Me, I made CDs because yes. I've not listened to them for ages, and so it was. I want to say it was Peace of Mind, which mm-hmm. I think is the one with uh, To Tame a Land, yeah, yeah and sure. Sunlight and Steel, yeah, <laughs> back to back. And oh, what's the other one? There's Quest like, for Fire. Quest for Fire. <laughs> And every time, like, I, it's just, that's been on in the car. As soon as I've, like, arrived at my destination, the first thing I do is put on chat. In a time when dinosaurs <laughs> ruled the earth. earth. <laughs> in a place. Uh, it's so, oh, What they some, do with that album is they, they throw Quest for Fire. There's and a couple throw, of uh, really good songs on that album. No, it's all, in my opinion, it's all fantastic, except for Sun and Steel and Quest for Fire. And to tame a land. I love to tame a land. Really? Yeah, one of my favorites. I thought you liked it. No, it's the one that's June. Yeah, I don't like the lyrics. <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't like it. Uh, well, I've mentioned before the lyrics that will not stop me liking I, I, the music. I Can I just interrupt remember. you a minute? The arrow trap was reabsorbing those arrows via osmosis. Yes. Did anyone else? Oh, I think you'll find it's impossible for them to absorb arrows by osmosis oh. unless they're made of water. Oh, how many seizures are happening right now? <laughs> See, I think you'll find it's impossible for a wall to absorb arrows anyway. But why well, could you, you know? That was you know. a health upgrade, by the way. How oh. how did you distinguish that from a Stu- stand standard well? Oh, oh, that was stupid. Still not got the lovely magical place from Santa Time back. 
I, it's kind of in Forgotten Sands, but is it's it? not as cool. Oh, I can't remember anything. When you meet, game. um, when you meet what's her face, the she sword. Is, she is in like sword lady. the realm of eternal blue and floating platforms and spheres. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That wasn't just health upgrades, though, was it? That was for that wasn't that was an actual upgrades. part that, of the that was game. plot upgrades. Yeah. That was now you can stop time. Abilities. Now you can a bit like that place in. It looks like that place in Dishonored. Now you can freeze water. Where the uh, outsider is. Freezing water would have been a really useful skill to have kept. Yeah. yeah. Although now, as I, I come to talk you. about it, there was a lot of oh, water no, in that desert wasteland. <laughs> what? In other words, he's the king of all the land and the king and of all the land. And the land tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, he rules song. the sandworms and the fremen. Alright, let me ask you this. In the land of the Let stars, me ask you this. If the lyrics were good. Tomorrow. <laughs> if the lyrics were good, would you like that song? I'm not really keen on the tune, to be honest. I love Oh. I think it's really strong musically. Can you hang down there? I mean, it's it's not as. Why'd I do that again? <laughs> it's uh, it's not as bad as, like. Uh, what did you say? Can you hang? Alexander yeah. the Great. Yeah, I like oh no, that. that's much worse. For... Was it really for my textbook? And then he put the Gordian knot. And yeah. then it turned the page twenty four oh, as a diagram. Purge. And then he fought them again. A couple of years later. Them again. <laughs> and then Alexander. Darius got wrecked. Pose yeah. Dickens and singing what he sees. <laughs> yeah, singing what he reads. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty. Oh. Again, good musically though. Like that's. Mm. I mean, to an extent, isn't one of their signature tunes the Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner? That's good, though. Which is just. That's really here good. Here is the Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Most of it, yeah. When the prince was <laughs> that doesn't have the. The problem with Exa Alexander the Great and kind of the Tamer Land, but. The mainly, chorus of Alexander the Great. Mainly the former is because he talks so. He sings so quickly. It's, he's trying to cram in all this information. <laughs> All this literal, just reading facts in while this awesome right. music happens. Behind. One, one that I will grant you, where the music is like, all right, I can forgive the really stupid lyrics. Count Tuscany. Deja vu. Oh, I don't like that song. Cause like musically, yeah, like the, the, I, I like the the guitar intro. This bit's oh. for people wearing three D glasses. Oh, look out! <laughs> Yeah, so you know the guitar intro is pretty. Yeah, no, don't like it. Yeah, no, Genu no. genuinely don't like it. And yeah. the lyrics, the lyrics do. Maybe and then the chorus is laugh. the co the chorus. Yeah, the lyrics are. Terrible. Have you ever been here before? I feel like you've been here before, but you weren't really here before. Does it really like the job? <laughs> Doesn't it feel weird when you feel you've had the job? I have to do this quiz for work, and one of the things I've done is the music round, because you have to have a music round, and because of where I work, the linking theme is fashion. What is... That's a demon Venus flytrap! Yeah, what the... <laughs> Look at this villain from Final <laughs> Fantasy! Yeah. The, yeah, this... Vaguely realistic, except for time powers thing, has taken a bit of a left turn. Hmm. Talking about vaguely realistic. We never fought a giant monster before, except we for fought the, a giant griffin. Except for the Dahaka. <laughs> and the Dahaka. <laughs> not in the first one, though. No, not in the first one. First of everything was just sand. Just sand zombies. Anyways, no. everyday sand zombies. Music round. The overarching theme is fashion, because where I work. Yeah. So yes. we've got things like blue suede shoes. Boogie shoes, all fur coat, no knickers, that sort of thing. Sharp dressed man. Sharp dressed man is one of them. And one of them is Die With Your Boots On by Iron Maiden. Nice. And my dad's going through the the, the samples that I put together. He's like, I go Yes. He's like, oh, I, I kind of know what this is. I kind of I Die With Your Boots On comes in and goes, well, that's Iron Maiden. <laughs> <laughs> because it's got that sort of... The sound. The sound of Iron Maiden. The one sound. He's like, I don't know which one it is, but it's... it's Definitely it's them. One. Yeah. The formula. You can sense Did the you formula. Just... No, okay. I thought the floor had just unloaded its own texture because of the cinematic kill you got. <laughs> you see how dope these are, though? Look at that Talim throw. These kill... They're really... 
pretty radical, man. Radical. So that's one of those things where if you get seen, there's everyone spawns. Yeah. It's like an alarm, basically. A new Clank. slam tank. What cider are you drinking t today? Well, I just drank a bottle of Sleeping Lemons, which is lovely. How can lemons sleep, man? Uh, it is ridiculous. a uh, Moroccan preserved lemons. It's basically it's slice them up and mix them with a load of salt, and then you leave them in a jar for like a year. But they're not alive. And they call man. them Sleeping Lemons. But they're not alive. Well, yeah. Or toad, are they? And toad in the hole isn't toads. Or is it? Bangers and mash doesn't bang. Yeah. Well, they, they do. If, what they do if you don't prick the sausages. True. Yeah. That was a really bad thing I said. I'm sorry. I'm glad we didn't Trains. hear it. Trains. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Prince shows off his pole dancing. If point. only you would lock up. That is or one have they of seen the me? worst chains I have seen. Is that is game. it looks like two textures just sort of yeah put there. Looks like uh you know like the cardboard Christmas trees you make when you're a kid. Yes. Where did the other guy go? Oh, why would Spider you turn Man. around the, literally the second I fall down? Do you remember Neil Buchanan's Art Attack? Yes. He once showed me how to make a super cool version of one of those. Or a chain. Uh, you know, you know the, the 2D Christmas trees that you make when you're a kid? He's like, if you, like, ball up newspaper and glue it together and then you paper mache, yeah. then it's actually got that sort of yeah. look the Christmas tree have. Yeah, yeah, I like that attack. It was really good. Oh, right. I was watching the, the Colorholic Wrestling podcast the other day, and oh. Adam Pacitti is talking about why he hates Pat Sharp. Oh, you know, Pat Sharp presented Funhouse if you didn't know. Pat Sharp saved us. Is what Pat Sharp did. And it's it's a thing because he was at he went to his uni. Like uh, Pat Sharp came to to Adam Chief's yeah. uni uh, to do one of the you know one of his evenings of adult Funhouse, and it is yeah. Uh, <laughs> Because they, you know, they're not going to have go karts. They don't have inflatable arenas or anything. He just has. Oh, it's awful. Feel free to bleep this if it's too awful. That's got to be someone's fetish. Mm. It's got to be Pat Sharp's <laughs> fetish. Pat Sharp's shit. Like that's not just that's that's goofy party games. That's, that's presumably that's... why he's doing. It. Hmm. I, I, uh. Big creeps. There was another thing as well, but I can't remember what the other thing was. I remember he was on an episode of Nevermind the Buzzcocks once he was in the lineup. Yeah. Yeah, no, I talked about that on uh, I think it was a Speedway or something. It was a long run, long standing joke of Pat Sharp. Oh, yeah, because I talked about Athelstan, the other one they got in to do that. Yeah, he, oh, was in every, he was in every single lineup for multiple episodes. <laughs> that was it. He also made fun of Adam Pacitti's uh, mullet. <laughs> And like he, he, you know, he was talking about this, and he's like, "Oh, come on!" And then he's like, "I did have a bit of a mullet at the time." Just like, well, you know, you brought that on yourself. Then. So did Pat Sharp. Well, he had a, he had a mullet in the eighties. He had a mighty eighties mullet. I assume he no longer had one. I assume. think he has like a crew cut now. Yeah. Turn around, go. I have just remembered one of the most. Weirdly specific things. Oh, I failed it. Official PlayStation magazine had an interview. You know, like they introduced the the creators and the writers and so on. Yeah. And they did so with like um. Here's three questions: Who are you? Where are you from? And this particular month, what is your favorite mullet? Okay. And a lot of people were like, oh, I don't know. I don't know what that is. And the answer I remember is Eddie Guerrero. Yes. No shadow of a doubt. Eddie Guerrero. Yes, good choice. <laughs> the best mullet in the industry. We lie, we cheat, we steal. Oh, that's it. It finish means my... warrior, don't you know? To finish my sentence, Sleeping Lemons beer. Yes. Beer made with Sleeping Lemons. It's sour and lemony and lovely. Okay. And then the other one is called Truffler. Tr and it's beer with truffles and sage. This is less good. 
So I'm going to drink that as quickly as I can. And move on to move on to breakfast of champignons, which I was drinking here last time, but I can't remember if I said this. You talked about what it was, breakfast but not what it was called. Um, I have had old mouth, old mo however that's pronounced. It says on the bottle, doesn't it? Oh, I don't know. Oh, wow. that's, it's, that's in their adverts. It's like mispronounced since 1956 or whenever it was founded. Amazing. I had kiwi and lime. It's not their best. It's funny because they're from New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs>